Greetings, Black Light, Elder Black Light. Got to make sure I put that in there, the Elder. Now, you know, uh, in my previous videos, uh, I was showing you some in Revelations where it was speaking about the, uh, the one who's going to take the beast down had a sword in his mouth. Now, you can't take that literally, you know, that he, what he's talking about is that he's going to speak in a way, chop off the head of the beast, you know. Because we're talking about, actually, we're talking about propaganda. And I explained to you that propaganda only means to promote uh, an agenda or anything, really, you know that you're trying to get across and you use a scientific way of doing it. Now a lot of people use art, you know, uh, billboards, uh, drawings, cartoons, uh, movies, you know, movies is, moving pictures is art, uh, music, you know, it's an art form. You know, rap is an art form. Uh, newspaper is media. Anything in the media. News. <clears throat> documentaries or whatever. <clears throat> and <clears throat> this sways your thinking, see. And uh, Caucasian has got so good and he could uh, subliminally put messages using all types of tricks and techniques into what you watch on television or movies. And he started putting it in music. You know, he could uh, put something backwards, you know, say something backwards and put it in the record or, mute, you know, into a... CD or whatever they're using now, and it'll subliminally get to your subconscious or your conscious, and it's like a hypnosis thing. You might react off of it because see, everybody can't can't be hypnotized. Uh, most people can though, and uh, very few people who don't be hypnotized. Well, see, what y'all fail to realize is that uh, Nipsey's father, he's the deepest one of all, you know, because he the one that uh, groomed Nipsey. And his brother, too, but some people pick it up, pick up better than others. You know, just like I'm trying to groom those who've been following me faithfully day one, my day one brothers and maybe some sisters in there, you know, uh, they might pick up better than, than some others, you know, so, but Nipsey had that science down, you know, and, you know, by me being older than, than Nipsey, I done been through the, through, through the music business, and I caught on, slowly but surely I caught on, because I just, uh, back in those days, you know, we, we wasn't aware of the music industry and how you know it was programming the people you know we just thought it was an opportunity to get paid you know opportunity to make money off of if you if you got a talent for music and we you know we just thought hey this is a way we can get girls and this is a way we can get paid 
all we got to do is be good. But as we, I went through it, uh, people started getting killed and murdered around me. First one that uh, was, was murdered was a, a guy. <clears throat> I lived over there on the, on the west side in Detroit on a street called Finkel. That's five miles. That's three miles from eight miles. But it's called Finkel, you know, when you're close to 12th Street. 12th Street is now Rosa Park Boulevard, but it runs into Finkel, and Finkel runs into Five Mile. And in the 50s, early 60s, it was this guy who made a song called The Entertainer. He died mysteriously. Now, I stayed about, I stayed on the street called Wildermere. And Wildermere is a, a street that Jackie Wilson stayed on. I stayed a block over from Parkside. David Ruffin stayed on a street called Parkside. And I used to go to, Jackie Wilson had a daughter that gave parties. I used to go to the party. Jackie Wilson would be out of town. She'd give a party, though. And I go over there, and I've been over David Ruffin's house, you know. But I want you to hear something before my time run out. Show you how how deep this brother was. This where I'm from, and this mm -hmm. is what I represent. But it was for a reason. I wanted I wanted to establish, you know, what I belong to, and I looked at it like jail. That's what I used to tell my homies because. Even some of my homeboys would be like, bro, you can't come out I'm talking about the hood specifically, you know what I mean? But I'm just like, you know, um, when you walk into a dorm, the first thing you establish is where you from. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you get into the, the person behind this. Just, just in case whoever got a problem with this, whoever your enemies is, you go to the back, you handle your business, and then you get into like, oh, okay, I could actually fuck with you. you. You know what I mean? We get to know each other, but... You get that out the way first. And so, um, also, I wanted to, I wanted my message to impact gang culture. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted what I had to say to impact individuals like myself, young people, that was in these areas that was controlled by gangbanging. I didn't want to preach to the choir, but I wanted to be able to say, you know, uh, I'm one of you, and where I'm going to go, wherever I end up, you're going you're gonna to know that you can end up there too, whether it's at the top of the game or in a successful situation as a business owner, I came from this and it's, it's authentic and I'm not on the outside of this culture. That's why I came in like I came in. I wasn't trying to like be on no super tough guy shit. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to. <clears throat> See, <clears throat> just like Tupac in that thug life, he's just expressing it a little different and more eloquent than Tupac. You know, Tupac was raw with his, you know. But Tupac, you know, y'all know he, he was with the Panthers. But see, where they mess up at is you can't use the music industry to organize your agenda and spread your agenda. They're not going to let you, man. You know. They're not going to let you wake up, to, especially the gangs. See, the gangs is the biggest money, one of the biggest money makers they got. Because the gang going to sell the dope for them. You know. They're going to do all the... Uh, Uh, street stuff. That's the underground economy. And then they gonna put them in jail. That's more money in their pockets. Turn them into slaves, see. And the court system gonna make a bunch of money. 
and the prison system gonna make a bunch of money. See, yeah, so they don't want you waking up. Cause in the gangs, you know, they sleeping, man. You know, they. That's why I played uh, the Warriors when Silas was telling them, you know, uh, wake up. This is our turf. You know, but y'all weren't getting it. <clears throat> Just like y'all don't get <clears throat> the reasons why, these are the reasons why they could have killed Nipsey. You're about to cut their money. And then, on top of that, you're going to open up a, a marathon, you know, a uh, store and all that section over there. He's getting ready to do like uh, they did on the Stick Up Kids. Y'all will see that movie. They uh, took a section of Harlem and, you know, Stick Up Gang, is an, uh, the Stick Up Kids is another movie y'all should dig. But this is Black Light. <clears throat> <clears throat> and when you look at... Uh, you look at uh, Jermaine, uh, what's his name? He he don't look like he uh, he look very concerned right there. Man, what what you getting ready to do? What you getting ready to say? You know, you can tell by the expression on his face. He don't look too happy about what Nipsey is saying. The biggest trick, the slickest trick that devil ever pulled was to make you think that he wasn't a devil. It was a black light.